a hundred grand can buy you a lot of different sailboats. We're talking near 40 foot Benetos, older Catalinas, smaller Halberger Razzis even. But just how much boat can you get if you're willing to go a little older and you want to maybe cross an ocean? This week on Everything You Need to Know, the $25,000 price drop on a Hylus 44 and why we're seeing price drops across the whole boat market today. We know all too well that during COVID, sailboat prices skyrocketed. Everybody had to have one. What was a $10,000 CNC 30 sold for over 33 grand. What was a $60,000 Hunter 80 was going for over a hundred. But things have changed. And if you're in the boat market right now, you're seeing what I'm seeing. Prices are coming down. And there's a few reasons for that that we'll talk about in a minute. But first, Look at this ocean going high list that just dropped $25,000 off the price. This boat's been on the market for a while now and they were around 150 grand, but now it's under 100, which is cheap considering what you get in this boat. The first picture here tells quite a story right off the hop. Now you may see a fuzzy, poorly taken picture from the boat that was sailing alongside the high list. But what I see here is a full batten main that looks fairly new. And this isn't your average panel main either. Plus, it's got two heavily reinforced reef points sewn into it. We see the same panel pattern in the heavily reinforced jib as well. Something's going on here. This isn't your grandpa's Beneteau. We also see from this picture that she's out in some pretty good wind and water too. And she's pointed fairly high with the clue of the jib well inboard of the rail. So this old girl might be from 1989, but she can still sail. This overhead picture from the manufacturer of the layout gives us a good picture of the typical center cockpit ocean going boat interior. The main saloon isn't suited for dinner parties or entertaining. This is a small but functional two bedroom apartment. These center cockpits are very good at rule number one keep the people in the boat. The cockpit has these high combings and is small and tight to make sure you always have something to lean against, even in the worst conditions that you're going to experience out in the ocean. They give you just enough room back here to stretch out, but nothing more. They also make it very easy to stitch up a full enclosure so you can sail even when the weather gets a little bit spicy. As we head inside, we see that tighter saloon area that I was talking about, but this is still big enough for a small family to call it home. And the mast goes all the way to the keel, as it should in a blue water boat. And someone has taken the time to liven up this sort of cave atmosphere with Corian countertops, which is nice, but this is still an 80s boat, so you need to be okay with how dark it gets down here. We do also get a dedicated nav desk, which is a big plus. That's a bonus if you have to work from the boat for any period of time. And the galley runs down the hallway to make sure that you have somewhere to lean and brace yourself if you're inclined to cook while you're on a passage. This is the hallmark of a blue water boat. This 25,000 pound boat was meant to be out plying the world's oceans, not sitting at a dock mixing fruity rum drinks all day. She's meant to travel, but when you get where you're going, she gives you this massive aft cabin with an island bed so you can get out to go pee without wrestling over your spouse like we see in so many other boats. And this bedroom comes with its own head. Now sadly, this broker couldn't be bothered to take any more pictures of the inside of the boat, but there's a whole second bedroom up in the bow with its own head, so two bedroom apartment that happens to be able to sail across oceans. This boat is a hundred grand and I think that's a lot to say. They just did all new standing rigging three years ago. The chain plates and furling gear was just inspected. The sails are recent. She comes with 300 feet of anchor road. Someone was out cruising the world on this thing and they kitted it out just the way you'd want it done. She was repowered with a brand new turbo Yanmar 10 years ago. She's got over 500 amp hours of new AGM batteries. She's got a dinghy and EPIRB and even comes with davits that haven't been installed yet. 
and all that world cruising blue water goodness for under a hundred grand. And we have to talk about boat prices now. I do a lot of consulting and helping people buy boats. And if you're shopping right now anywhere in North America, you've likely seen what we're seeing. Every year at about this time, the market totally dries up. Half the boats that were for sale last month are gone and not very many new boats are showing up to take their place. And with that market dry up, the prices are slowly coming down, or in the case of this Hylus, totally collapsing. I told a story a few episodes ago about how I bought two sailboats in the same day because I watched the prices and I saw them twitch a little and I pounced on them right at the right time. I made an offer with a good story and the owner was actually happy to sell them to me at a big discount. Well, this Hylus price just twitched and it twitched big. A $25,000 price drop on a boat someone's clearly been sinking money into for the last five years says a lot. Someone's gotten sick or gotten a job offer or has to travel or something. Someone needs this boat gone and gone quickly. They're still paying for the ad on Yacht World right now and they're just itching to see this boat go. Now's the time. The list is 99999 so someone who wants to continue this boat's purpose, which is to cross oceans and explore the planet, should jump in with an offer of like 80 grand in a good story. Tell them what you'll be doing with this boat and all the amazing adventures that she'll have after you buy her. Tell them about your kids learning to sail and whatever else you plan to do with this boat. I bet you they'll at least think about what you're offering. The mission here at Lady K Sailing has always been to get more people sailing more easily. And I couldn't do it without the patrons that make that all possible. These are people who give a couple of bucks an episode to make these videos possible. If you'd like to help out, please consider becoming a patron. So what's up with the boat market then? What's actually happening right now? Well, kind of a bunch of things. Interest rates on loans have a lot to do with it, but on the East Coast specifically, there are more things at play. GEICO is sticking it to boaters, of course, because they won't insure anything old. But we still have State Farm and Progressive, so we're okay. It's cruising season now, and that's a big deal. Everyone leaves from Florida to the Caribbean in November, so all the boats ideal for that job have already been bought up. The only thing left on the East Coast now is stuff that was overpriced to begin with, or not in good enough shape for the task at hand. The light turns green for the hop to the Caribbean in about a month, so anything worth having is kind of already had. And then there's the boat show. Who in the boat market right now is gonna buy a boat right before they get to go see all the new boats at the Annapolis Boat Show in two weeks? Everyone sort of stopped shopping because they'd rather get on a few more boats and make a more educated decision later after the show and all the brokers are lining up the boats that they want to sell at the show and the cruisers who want to sell are sailing to the show right now not to mention the weather everyone north of the chesapeake just paid that awful winter storage bill people like me so why would i pay yacht world and a broker to continue listing my boat after i already paid to keep owning her for another six months Pull the ad down, winterize the boat, and wrap her up. We'll try again in the spring. So now is a horrible time to be looking for a boat, but a very good time to make an offer on a boat. And that brings us back to the Hylus 44. They dropped 25 grand, so they need it gone. The market sucks. No one's boat shopping right now. And they're looking right now at the reality that they may need to sit on this wonderful boat for another six months before she sells. So really, it's gonna cost them five grand anyway. Why not let it go now for less? And they have no idea if there will even be a market for a boat from 1989 next year. And winter is coming. Would you take 80? I'd take 80. If you're boat shopping and you need help and you wanna book an hour of my time, I am available. Head over to ladykaysailing.com forward slash consults. So I'll leave you with this. You can still grab up a boat and head south this year. You have about a month. And we looked at that 393 last week that's already kitted out and ready to go. A few hidden gems like that 
still exist. And you can also wait for the boat show and get on some boats to better figure out what it is you like and don't like. And if you do that, I'll be at the boat show wandering around aimlessly, probably drooling over the new Amels. So please come and say hi. Or if you can keep shopping and narrow down your search to buy something when everything kicks up again in April. Whatever you do, you've watched this video this far, so we both know you want to do it. And you aren't getting any younger. You have to do something, and you have to do it now, because the very worst thing that you can possibly do is nothing. Go small, go simple, go now. That's it for this week, guys. I'm super soaked about the Annapolis Sailboat Show. I'll be hanging out with my friend Todd, and I should be around for about a week. I would love to meet you guys all there. Until next week, keep the heavy side down, but not too far down. We'll see you.